Hello, Appius Atius Rullus here once again with a little bit more shenanigans. Today I have a 3v3 scenario that I am dubbing Offense Defense. One, Both teams have the same objective, and that is to kill the largest number of peasants on the other team. So there's a little bit of setup that needs to go down here, and the teams have to figure this out themselves. On each team is allowed one player who does a monster of their choice from the and we became the mod by the one and only holy pilgrim who's one of the spectators in this match with me What's up? and okay so that's one player in your army has to be that monster i, I can already tell reptile king is probably gonna be going straight for their gargantles on here's the catch that's the only unit you get no more no more units in that army the other army can be a full army of whatever they want and then the third army is the very traditional and very uh, uh astute and well built i should add peasant army with these stipulations 19 peasants fully upgraded and your lord has to be a prophetess with no spells on foot now the winner of this of this game mode will be the team that kills the most peasants. Now that could be a little skewed. We're not going to be looking at um, total uh, kills done. Like Gargantles on is going to have like a thousand plus kills. That's going to happen. But that could happen against the defending army, not necessarily the peasant army. So we will base the the end result off of who has the most peasants standing at the end of the game okay so it looks like our teams have started to figure things out here i'm going to go ahead and introduce the players to you real quick um as i mentioned uh we do have the creator of the mod himself holy pilgrim here watching and participating uh on team a we have broken sky who's taken up the role of the peasants uh, regina regina dea who's going to be playing her favorite faction avalorn and of course, Reptile King, who I am certain is going to be their faction's monster with Garcantles on. Please, by the way, go subscribe to his channel. He's got some fantastic stuff. It's not just Warhammer, it's also Saurian. Um, the other team, by the way, uh, is Wicked, who, uh, best of luck to you tomorrow on your trip to Atlanta, Ungrim Iron Fist of such fame from the Air of Carthage Discord server, and Bane Bear. Um, as it stands right now, I can't actually look at your armies, I don't think. No, I can't really see what you're picking or what you're selecting. Um, but I can see the first team pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, we're playing on the multiplayer crossroads map. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You just have peasants. <laughs> That's what it's going to boil down to. Okay, so Wicked. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not Wicked. Holy Pilgrim. What are your thoughts on this? What do you think is going to happen here? Well, Bob, I think Gargantulon's just going to tear through Wicked's present forces, just scoring tons of kills. The defenders aren't going to know what's happening. They're going to try and go for Broken Sky's peasants, but Regina, with their sister brigade, are just going to let loose right into their troops. No hope, no survival, all death, all the time. And it's going to be lots of fun. So I, I think you're definitely thinking what I'm thinking here, which is that Gargantulon is a bit of an unfair advantage when it comes to killing peasants. Just a little bit. I mean, you know, just a 40-foot T-Rex was stomping through a bunch of people wielding shovels and pitchforks. No, and so, not, not too much of a big deal. Oh, absolutely. So I can't even bring spells. Uh, for the for the peasant armies, no spells. The uh, Honestly, your HQ choice is just like a slightly larger peasant with a fancy hat. Hey, at least she's uh, moderately better looking. <laughs> moderately better looking peasant better than the patchy peasants of course um okay. so i what are what are some other um monster choices here uh pilgrim that you think would would do a really good job oh man um the the beastman soul eater if the defenders can keep that thing alive that thing can rack up a bunch of kills if you guys have ever seen a cluster bomb hitting you know, anything. <laughs> you have an idea of what the Soul Eater can do. It, 
it, nothing says hooray mm. like when your soul eater gets a uh, 500 kills off of one throw. I I would like to make a case for the dark elf hydra monster. Oh, that I is think, a good one too. I think I have never I have actually never lost in peasant kills with that thing. Not even yeah, to so go against Yeah, so basically really the interesting. Is a hydra that can just run into a peasant mob and just let loose firestorms which will incinerate everything around it. And it makes the peasants angry who, who charge into the fire. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, they're, that rampage. That's an interesting benefit. So, by the way, players, when you re think your team is ready, go ahead and ready up so we can start this battle. Um, we're, we are on your time, officially, at this point. Um you know some other lords i would love to see in this um the 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 mother of the flame i think would be interesting um because uh, she can yeah. constantly spam out fire spells one question yes um, if i if you brought like a flying uh monster would that make it so that uh i have to land or lose no it's, no it's, it's unbreakable you will not have to however there's a graphics glitch that happens occasionally where you won't be able to use any of its abilities but it'll still be alive and fully capable of munching something. Okay. So, um, Pilgrim, while I'm thinking about it, with um, with this mod, um, I've noticed that the lords have cost values that might not make sense to some people. Um, can you explain to me why exactly Gargantelzon is cheaper than Mastamundi? The reason being is that was the default price for the monsters. It's priced the same as the monster they're based on. <laughs> It's the and default that, price, but that, you said this is this is a mod, right? That was not my design decision. This is an early build. I'm still getting a feel for what's good and what isn't, and I'm gonna be increasing prices to make it a little more fair. Okay. I mean, as far as these monsters can be, they're they're just meant for entertainment value. Okay, interesting. So it, it's actually the the value of these monsters for for multiplayer was actually coded into the game by CA, even though they weren't available for multiplayer play. Yeah, what I'm thinking is CA just copied their entries in the database and just changed a few of their stats and left it at that. <laughs> Ah, because a a feral carnosaur base is sixteen hundred. Therefore, the feral con carnosaur um, monster that is Gargantelzon is also worth sixteen hundred. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's uh, it's very enlightening. Thank you for that, Pilgrim. Um, and as I'm as we're waiting here for these armies, um. What are some of the other monsters that could do really well here? Like, I've seen people pick the... I can't even remember its name. It's the Greenskin's Farting Giant. Uh, oh, Morgar. <laughs> yeah, that, that stinky guy. Um, I don't know if he'll actually be any good, because the fart doesn't really do damage. What it does is shock and terror. Uh, the, the smell is just so pungent, even peasants can't stand it. <laughs> and routing peasants is no good for kills. Aha, interesting. And then um, the Skaven also have a, a choice, which is a giant hell pit abomination. What's its special ability? It summons storm vermin, right? Yes, it summons unbreakable, non-crumbling storm vermin with halberds, which would be really good against large foes. The only problem is it has a lengthy cooldown timer that the enemy force could easily take advantage of if not careful. And with a giant rampaging T-Rex on the field, it's probably going to get munched. <laughs> and then... Let me correct that. It will get munched. It will get munched. Okay. And then Norska has uh, Frigistrex, which is causing me no end of nightmares in my Throg oh, campaign. Man. Yeah, that, that thing can slow down anybody to an absolute crawl. Honestly, if you brought fidget tricks, keep it around that Gargantel's on and he ain't going nowhere. While really? your other friends to focus on the enemy peasants. <laughs> That'd be an interesting strategy. I'd like to see that. That would definitely be definitely be positive. I, I love that we're talking about this so much and, and the I'm I'm watching the, the two armies like pick and repick and change pick based off of everything that we're saying. <laughs> so so let's uh, go with uh, uh Reptile King's side. 
So Reptile King Gear obviously playing as Gargantulon. And Regina, you're actually not playing as Avalon. I'm glad that she is. Um, I kind of mentioned something about this earlier today when I was analyzing some Dawi FFA in the sense that the the play the player picked Carrot Kadrin for each battle. All right, and normally that's not a problem. I mean, why would that be a problem, right? Except that you are to a small degree showing your hand a little bit to your opponent. Yeah. Um, because when you're picking Carrot Kadrin, that means your Lord options are what? Ungrim Iron Fist, a uh, Dwarf Lord, or a Rune Lord. If you're going to pick Carrot Kadrin, I mean, just stylistically speaking, you're almost always going to pick Unger Iron Fist as your Lord. Um, but you can always change things up a bit and go with, say, just the Dwarves. Now you could be bringing Belagar or Iron Hammer. You could be bringing Thorgrim. You could be bringing Ungrim. Your opponent isn't necessarily going to know 100%. Um, so I kind of do want to see Regina Dea play more High Elves in a competitive sense. Um just to get people second guessing oh well maybe she isn't bringing Ilario though I'm almost certain that that Regina is in fact bringing Ilario I mean it's really sure it's Reptile King bringing Kurgan's on so, <laughs> so Reptile and friends what is your guys strategy for this match I think they'll I think they'll want to show us actually I don't think they want to talk about it yeah okay alright any comments from Reptile and friends it's interesting I'll I'll, I'll say that all right, well, that's the voice of Broken Sky right there. Yeah. Um, I think we're readying up now, it looks like. Half of our yeah, players uh, ready to go. How about team... Team... Uh, who, who's the monster? Bane Bear? Yeah. You're the monster? Yeah. What, what's your team feeling like? You, you pumped? You ready? Um, you peasants? Oh, God. Uh, we're hungry. Hungry for peasants. That's what I want to hear. We just got to get the the two defending armies. I think need to need to ready up and get the show on the road. All right, it's just Regina now. We're almost there. Okay, loading into the fight. Here we go, lads. Now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Re. Right. <laughs> Peasants, uh, I would like to make a rousing speech before the battle. <laughs> Not all of you are going to die. <laughs> but uh, good news for any of you that survive, you will take the other peasants' rations for about a week. We'll take the rest of those. Yay! We're out of food. Aren't one of you CA, buddy? The peasants are the food. They are gargantles on food. So are we going to do the ceremonious damsel versus damsel opening fight? Yes. <laughs> the what? Oh my gosh, that would be so. Uh, uh, no, I think I think for the benefit of surprise, uh, just in case there are any you know curveballs in this game, I think we should just start immediately. Let the two armies try to get whatever kills they can. Um, <laughs> Regina says no. They will get one copper piece for all of you. One. Un. So I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, to this matchup. I think this is going to be very very fascinating, very interesting. I, I am actually very surprised at the turn of events here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was I was wow. able to see um, I was able to see the deploy the 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 army selection options for Team uh, Reptile and Regina. So there's there are some curveballs on display oh, here for gosh. sure. I I am liking on. I love, I love your pick, Uncle. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think there's. Thank you. Fan, but, uh, it's a lot of good choices here. Uh, I agree with with Ungrim's army. The uh, we, wicked, your army choice might be a little weak, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> wicked, yeah, wicked is the uh, the peasant mob player of uh, of Bordelow. And uh, his deployment uh, kind of makes sense to me, to, to an extent. Uh, let's go check out Team Repgina. That's what I'm calling this now, Team Repgina. Um, well, hold on, hold on. Wait, not necessarily. Broken Repgina. That's what I'm going to call there this team. Go. Broken Repgina. That's, that's much more inclusive. I like it. <gasps> Jabba the Hutt! What? Jabba the Hutt on his little uh, 
Oh yeah, so we're we're I, I we're announcing time. now, huh? Oh man, I can't wait for the Brown Nation cities to go off. Yeah. Be a fun one. So let's go ahead and reveal to the other team. Sure, <laughs> there is no Gargantles on on this side. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, that could have been a ruse. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it? Really? <laughs> Show of hands, who thinks that Liz, that Red Tail King is bringing Gargantle on? See, that's what I thought. Everyone raised their hand. <laughs> I have no hands. <laughs> I, I play with my nose. Ah, uh, dude. Digging for treasure over there? This is <laughs> interesting. <Silence. laughs> Was that a nose-picking joke? You digging for treasure? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh. Excited for this to kick off. I, I, I like how it, it's very fascinating watching these peasant mobs just teleport all over the map. Like maybe I should maybe I should play here. No, maybe I should play here. These aren't your average peasants. <laughs> no, they these are, are the most powerful peasant mobs I can muster from the local village. They are. That is absolutely true. These are the most powerful peasants you will ever have in a game of Warhammer uh, uh, Total War Two. Ever. Unless, unless Holy Pilgrim decides to mod, mod it once again. Oh, I know what the Bretonian monster is gonna be. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There you go. It's gonna be a, a giant Grail Grail relic. No, it's, uh, a no, it's gonna be a. It's just a, gonna be a peasant attached to the model of the Necrosphinx. So it's all distorted and horrifying. <laughs> We're gonna call it the Hell Pit Peasant Abomination. <laughs> the Hell Pit Peasant Abomination. There we go. The Hell Peasant. So I think Team Rep Broken Gina or Broken Rep Gina. Yeah, I think that team's just about ready. Um, Wicked is. I think he's trying to draw out um, very unique flying V peasant formations. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting from Wicked on Bear Team. <laughs> I wonder if the other. I'll be very fascinated to see if there's like uh, peasant mob versus peasant mob action in oh, this. It's it's actually Ungrim the Wicked Bear. That's what it is. Ungrim the Wicked Bear. That's a fantastic team name. I love it. Oh man, dude. Wicked going with the Mighty Ducks formation over here. Alright, I hear the chimes. You see, you Armies see are readying up. We are less than a minute away from, from conflict. Oh, hold on to your butts, boys and girls. This is going to be a fun one. And we're off. So we do have the Mother of the Flame and uh, and Mazda Mundi on Zlok versus Queen Baylita on her mount and the Beast of Rama. This is going to be fantastic. Baylita for the win. Yeah, it's an interesting pick. So I did specify that there is like a defending player and a monster player, but I think Team Broken Repgina's strat here is going to be to just charge in, do as much damage as possible, kill all of the peasants, and leave Broken Sky to his own devices. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> that is my guess, looking at these army picks. Yeah, unless the, you know, Ungrim the Wicked Bear has answer for a flying, unbreakable phoenix. Oh, what a uh, dodge. It's going to be very difficult for them to prevent Regina from snatching up. It's unbreakable. Probably the best option for Ungrim the Wicked Bear is to charge the battle. Lines before their army burns to cinders. This lag is uh, a little obnoxious, unfortunately, but we'll see what we can do. Hopefully this will clear up. <laughs> right as you say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the Bone Giant is missing his shots against the Mother of the Flame. Just so unfortunate. Oh, oh no. Did he? Oh, yeah, there is a little bit of damage. I think that was actually from the Ushapti with Great Post. The, uh, uh, um, over, ooh, over on the other flank. Here. Yep. Virginia trying to get some, uh, some easy points against the line of, uh, Spearman. 
If only that Necrosphinx could fly into the sky like the proud little birdie he is. Well, the Necrosphinx is going to have plenty of work uh, later when it tries to do something about Reptile King's blessed Carnosaurs and uh, Stegodons. Ain't that right. Oh, is that a flamestorm I see? I do believe it is. Ooh. Very slowly taking its time and instantly missing. It might come back later. We'll see. It, it, see, that's the beauty of the Mother of the Flame. It really doesn't matter. She has infinite of them. And yep. she can use it every 25 seconds. And we have a fiery convocation. Run, it looks peasants. like it looks like it might miss this group of peasants. Oh, Excellent swift. dodge. Excellent dodge from Wicked. Swift peasants. I, I'll never say I never thought I'd say this, but I'm proud of those lads. Wow. Just just missed the last peasant in that second mob. Man, just barely scorched his foot. Oh, but here we go. The Mother of Flame has landed and is now going after that unit of peasant mobs. She's kind of oh. tired of trying to line up these shots when we are basically playing in slow motion. Ooh, are, are these peasants going to charge the other peasants? I hope so. Peasant fisty cuffs? Maybe, I but sure the Beast of Rama might have something to say about that. Oh, the Beast of Rama coming in, but... Oh, and we have we have contact between the uh, the Necrosphinx and the dinosaurs of Reptile King. This is Ungrim Iron Fist versus Reptile King. These are two pretty solid players in their own right, but I think that Necrosphinx is actually a little outnumbered here. Um, yeah, just a little bit, but never underestimate the power of Baylita. And there we go, right off the bat from Mazda Mundi, the Necrosphinx has been netted into place. So Reptile this King's thinking be, he has the advantage, advantage here. This is going to be a devastating blow against Ungrim. And meanwhile, the other Necrosphinx has gotten a piece of a Blessed Carnosaur. But Not the, a fan of Jurassic Park. But the Blessed Carnosaur is actually going to pull out of that engagement. The Bone Giant's opening fire into uh, this dinosaur mob, but that Necrosphinx is already in critical bonding and crumbling. Omewamu in and Regina, uh, doing the team play here, is going to try and ward off the Skeleton Warriors and Skeleton Spearmen with uh, with the Fiery Convocation to try and save those dinosaurs before uh, they interfere with their Necrosphinx assassination mission. There it goes. Both the Fiery Convocation and a Flamestorm. Man. Yep. Beast of Rama has found its first prey. Uh, the peasants are running, but there is no running that these peasants can do that will ha help them to get away from the Beast of Rama. Meanwhile, let's see how those spells did. And that wasn't actually a flamestorm. That was from Lord Monstamundi. That is a banishment. Oh, a banishment! Monstamundi is a very versatile unit, and it can get a lot done. The... Feral Carnosaur, though, is now bogged down in a unit of uh, Skeleton Spearmen, and the Necrosphinx has gotten a hold of it again. All of a sudden, that uh, that Bliss Carnosaur is at half and less than at half of its um, leadership, but it's recovering. It's actually, no, it's going back and forth. It doesn't know if it wants to stay or run away. And more hits, and this time coming in from the Bone Giant, taking out a larger portion of the Skeleton Spearmen than it did of any of uh, Reptile King's Jurassic Park steam yeah, themed army. And Ruination of Cities Ooh. to bail out the uh, the Feral Car the Blessed Carnosaur. Um, the Beast of Rama getting 67, 73 peasant kills in one go. Very so, nice. what do you think two Feral Bastilodons can do about a Beast of Rama? Oh man, not much. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, the Beast of Rayma is an anti-infantry monster, but those little turtledons aren't going to do very much against, you know, creature of such stature and hate. Oh, I love to see this. So, uh, Broken Sky has recognized that even though I told the players that they only get a Prophetess, that Prophetess can still kill some peasants and has put it into combat right away. Um, oh, and now both monsters are fully engrossed in their task of killing Ooh. peasants. Fiery convocation. Yep. Uh, 
the same one that's oh oh man they're just too much going on they couldn't handle it there was too much fear coming off of the uh, the mother of the flame the spell itself the rear charge from the prophetess of beasts they were done the shot with great bow have decided they want to retarget and they might want to do something about the mother of flame we, we got peasants duking it out here on Oh, we do, we do. Peasant on peasant action. Pitchfork versus pitchfork. And oh man, in slow motion, they are flying all over the place. They're involved in this combat. It is fantastic to watch. <laughs> Alright, Beast of Rama has decided he's going to take a quick snack on Bastilodon Hide. But look at the, these Bastilodons. They're not taking any damage from the Beast of Rama at all. 140 armor is a lot of armor. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I think it's mainly because the Beast of Rama is just like, eh. And just scooping out. Follow oh, my peasant's legions. Fear yeah, no darkness. <laughs> <laughs> no oh, we got we got a carnosaur going after the Shati with great bows. That's a great kill right there. Oh, that'll be great for the uh, for the carnosaur if he can get in before the Shati or the bone giant can open fire on it. Oh, um, it will. Look at that leap. Run! Yep. <laughs> a slow motion hit, but everything always looks epic in slow motion. I wonder, are there any Carnosaur versus um, Tomb King animations? Like, one of my favorite things to see is like a Carnosaur taking on a Hell Pit Abomination because oh, the am animations are just so cool. Some of the other animations that you will never ever get a chance to see are um, Swan Mage Priests without a mount, um, like Mazda Mundi. They can actually oh, pick up dinosaurs, levitate them, and throw them against the ground. Ooh, speaking of Mazda Mundi, he is enraged and getting beat up by a Necrosphinx. Thankfully, there's a uh, there's a revivification crystal in this fight with him. Baylita has gotten a piece of Lord Mazda Mundi, and I think Mazda Mundi is not going to survive this. I did not. Is this is this uh, is this a spell ability that's forcing him to uh, to go crazy out of control? I, I believe so. Is I something Baylita has? Oh, and it's, so it's targeted. It's not based on proximity. No, the the Beast of Rayma's AOE effect is based on uh, proximity. But the reason why he's rampaging, um, it's it's yeah, just an AOE effect that he can pop. It is map wide. Oh, it's map wide. Oh, Jesus. It's a map wide rampage, and that might actually take Mazda Mundi out of the game prematurely because. All those there's another ruination of cities and another banishment he could deliver, and Zlock himself could probably have killed 500 peasants alone. So this is going to hurt for Team uh, Broken Repchina. Uh, and we have our Summon Du Shopti uh, positioned right next to some peasants, actually in the unit of peasants, and getting ready to chase. That's actually a really good spot for that uh, for that summon do shopty because there's just so many peasants over here and not a lot to protect them. So I like that pick from uh, from Team uh, Ungrim the wicked well, bear. the Wicked Bear. Oh Ooh, man, boy, Bone boy, Giant. Oh, the but the Carnosaur yeah. is not impressed by how tall the Bone Giant is. Oh, what a punch! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sock that oh. dinosaur. Make him think twice about coming after you. <laughs> oh, my God. Johnny's got some. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I heard carnosaurs love them knuckle sandwiches. Um, we might be lucky. Lord Monster Monday might be able to come back later. Um, and there are plenty of healing options in the. Oh. 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 Yeah, right on time. Uh, Bailey is still doing great. That blessed Carnosaur is in trouble. That uh, Bastilodon with the Revivification Crystal is in trouble. But uh, so is that Necrosphinx, to a ooh, degree. Revivification Crystal's healing Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt might come back and change the flow of the game if the 
defenders don't do something about it. That's what I'm hoping for, too. I'd love to see... I mean, I'm a big fan of Mastabundi. He's absolutely my favorite lord in the game and campaign. And I love picking this character in giant uh, multiplayer matches like 2v2s, 3v3s. We got it, someone who shot T in a peasant mob on the left side of the battlefield, north left. Oh, yeah. That Summonu Shabti came over here right at the perfect moment and is just tearing peasants apart. And I'm seeing a lot of peasant versus peasant action just kind of all over the place. Oh, um, oh, it's the food riots of 1922. <laughs> so, so Beast of Raymond has already racked up 194 kills. And where is the Mother of Flame? I haven't seen that unit in a while. That, that surround with, between the skeleton warriors and the peasants Oh, we have our Ruination of Cities. Reptile King was able to get it off. Uh, and he has also put down a spell to support the Mother of the Flame. And the Mother of the Flame puts in a Fiery Convocation. Everything's just hammering away at this um, at this Tomb King blob under Ungrim Iron Fist. Oh, no! Baylita's stuck in there somewhere. Oh, Baylita's taking... Baylita's taking on uh, Lord Mondamundi, but Mondamundi has the support of a Blessed Carnosaur. And the other Blessed Carnosaur is beating the pants off of this bone giant now regardless of getting punched in the face not looking good for the tomb king constructs guys. not not at all i think i'm seeing some crumbling so i'm I, like i said earlier i'm really curious to know if there are any really epic and awesome um animations for the tomb king units uh i i've seen uh iron titan bunch of giant face but that's about it <laughs> I'd pay money for that. And right now I'm just listening to skinks riding on the backs of pistilodons, chasing Ushabdi and trying to poison them with their blow darts and spears. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, I believe the Hyrotitan will actually laser beam a Carnosaur down to the ground. Oh! I'll, I'll have to check that out later. That, that sounds like it'd be fun to watch. Uh, poor Baylita getting chomped. Yeah, Mother of the Flame now chasing off Baylita. Mother of the Flame up to 134 kills now. Um, pieces, yeah, so the the one of the armies is almost out entirely. Speaking particularly about Ungram Iron Fist, but Ungram has not been focusing 100% on facing down the other armies, quite like Team um, Broken Rep Gina has. Um, so this has freed up several units to do things like summon Ushabti into peasant mobs, um, pull back Ushabti with great bows to attack more peasants, Th have your, um, your, your prophetess chase down peasants. They seem to be much more focused on the map as a whole for the objective, or the, the other team is looking to just try and gain, um, control of the battle as a whole, and then send dinosaurs in to get the job done. Um... I think we need a little more appreciation for the beast of, of Rayma. It has 235 kills, and it has gone pretty much unnoticed for this entire battle. Yeah, I mean, but when you think of it this way, what does Team Broken Repchina really have left that can handle the beast of Rayma? Well, there's nothing, there's nothing left for us to uh, actually completely block it off. That's the problem. Oh, another flame storm from the... Uh... East of Rama, mm -hmm. hosting some peasants. Oh, and rampaging them. Forcing them to stick around in the flames. Oh, so brutal. So beautiful. So I'd also like to point out that, um, that Wicked here has kind of probably perhaps wisely kept most of his peasant mobs back on their side of the map. Um, and <laughs> I... <laughs> All, all, all respect for Broken Sky, who has come at after the other team with gusto, with his peasants, just attacking as much as he can. I wasn't saying anything because I wanted to see if it would, if it would trigger. And sure enough, here comes a fiery convocation. Will it get the job done, or is it, are they going to dodge? Oh, it just barely clipped them. Just, just missed. Beautiful dodge, beautiful dodge from Team Ungrim, the Wicked Bear. And oh, despite and despite what you what you may, might think here, this battle has only lasted six and a half minutes. You know, when you're having fun, Appius, <laughs> time feels much longer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sure. That's how it works. Oh, and what's this? This is the spell effect that's happening right now. Is that from the Beast of Rama? Banish them back to the Shadow Realm. Oh my god. Banish them back to their fiefdoms, back to their farms, back to little peasant hell. Oh man. One has to ask themselves, is hell really that much worse than being a peasant? No. That's the answer. <laughs> no. Mundi still has some healing left that he can pull off, um, but I think that marks the end of Mazda Mundi's bound spells. So all that's left for Zlock to do is just go grab some peasant lunch for himself. Oh, oh dang, that, that bird is just so pretty. <laughs> that, is, that is one giant fire chicken. Those peasants. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, what an animation. That was great. I was right there point blank for that one. Poor peasants. Poor bird having to soil its claws. And these peasants are now starting to think, you know what? If he can't handle the fire, get out of the kitchen. Oh, Beast of Rama with 329 kills. Mother of the Flame with 182. That Beast of Rama is looking like a bloody mess. Oh, another rampage going off from the Beast of Rama. That thing triggers fairly often. I think it goes off maybe once a minute. Uh, every 25 seconds. Of 25 seconds, wow. I, I gotta... I gotta look that up. Yeah. Oh, wow, I just watched a feral carnosaur tail oh, slap sorry, somebody shop to with great bows. Bad. It goes off every 15 seconds. 15 the seconds. Is, the, the duration is... So it's never not going. Kind of. Wow. That blessed Carnosaur swung its tail three times and destroyed an entire unit of Ushapti with Great Bows. Mm -hmm. And it's actually opened the door for that Carnosaur and several other dinosaurs in Jurassic Park to run roughshod on the on the guests of the of the park. Oh man. Oh man, here goes a Feral Stegonon. Surely been touched by Appius's pleasure. By my what? I don't know. <laughs> what have I been touching Carnosaurs with now? Excuse me. Oh, you shouldn't be touching Carnosaurs. It's like it's like cow tipping the extreme edition. Uh, sure. <laughs> Zlock has found himself some tasty, tasty peasants, and he's gnawing away at them, activating an apotheosis, which can cause fear. Which is actually having an effect. It's already shattered one unit of peasants before he can kill them. Um, you, know, you know, peasants are so full of dirt anyways. It's pretty much like eating grass. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The good news is, though, that um, that Lord Bastamundi is still healing up to the potential, I want to say, what, four or 5,000 health that he can get there? So it's know, probably gotta, a good call. we got to give peasants more credit than they actually get. Like, they are really good at dying. They're yes. So good at it. Yes, like, absolutely. I've never seen anyone die so effectively. As <laughs> Please leave a like for every peasant that died today. If I get that many likes, I will shit my pants. <laughs> like a peasant. <laughs> like a um, peasant. We got we got dinos everywhere. We got shovels, meeting pitchforks. We got. I'm trying to think. It's funny because a minute ago I was worried about what could Team um, uh, Broken Rep Gina do about the Beast of Rama, but now I'm thinking, what can Team Ungrim the Wicked Beast do, or Wicked Bear do about all of these dinosaurs running roughshod all over Wicked's peasants? Well, I mean, they can stare in absolute abject horror. <laughs> And here goes another fiery convocation. Looks like it was dodged. That's that's got to be tough to aim in this kind of setting because everybody there's so much space here. Everybody has all the room in the world to spread out, and you can't really get the blob kills that you really really want. Yeah. That's not. Shame the game's going by too fast for her to. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, actually, um, the slow motion is making it easier to dodge the spells yeah. of of yeah. the of the Mother of Flame. That's that's a hundred percent the truth here. Um, and I don't think these peasants are going to be coming back. I think even though they're broken, they're probably going to get across the line. So it's Boy, peasants going across the line prevents kills for the other team. Yes. So that there is something to be said for the strategy of just keeping your peasants on the back line, waiting until the enemy gets there and they run away in terror, and all of a sudden they're off the board and there are points oh, that the other team can't get. According, according to our resident reptile king, the Carnosaur actually has an animation of eating a peasant. Oh, you don't say. This is not going well for us, I think. Let's, uh... Oh, I just saw it. Oh, oh yes, you are you are correct. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> he's not done with it. He's playing with his food. Actually, I have an idea. What timing. I have a brilliant idea that may actually work. Victory is in the grasp of team... Um, of, of Team Broken Repchina and what what style it's being done into. <laughs> man. Uh, gotta give it up to that Carnosaur man. That was, that was a thing of beauty to watch. He was playing with his food, if I had ever seen it. If you can call it food. Oh, but that unit of peasants has, oh, uh, they've, they've, they've come back. They are now only shaken. They've There's decided... <laughs> oh, was that Dave? Of course it was. That Carnosaur says, oh, really? You want to come back? Oh, man, they're going for it, too. They just landed several hits. But uh, I do believe... I do believe that uh, that um, that returned unit of peasants is about to make a very, very unfortunate end. Oh, we've got that Carnosaur in animation, too. Guys but is that a dodged fiery convocation? Not for that guy or that one. Oh man. And here comes the mother of the flame. Rest in peace. Rest Squiescat and Pache, Dave's unit of peasant mobs. Rest oh my rip gosh. Rip, rip, rip. If we break if we break their entire army then we will end up with more kills. Come on! Well, you would think that, but there is one thing working against that strategy, and that is no matter what, the monsters themselves are unbreakable. So you can chase off the whole army, but you're still having to deal with, say, a Mother of the Flame or a Beast of Rhema. Oh, then that means my peasants also need to break. I can arrange that. Yes, throw your peasants into the bonfire <laughs> that is the Beast of Rhema. Do not worry, I have an idea. Oh, well, Prophetess getting hunted down by Gary the Bastillodon. I think it's actually kind of fascinating to watch as Prophetess is running away from the Bastillodon with Revivification Crystal. Here's a here's a matchup you won't see too often. I wonder who's going to win. <laughs> Probably the skink set to buy physics. Yep. Look, look at those guys. And they just pegged her full of spears. Oh my lord, and she's <laughs> <laughs> there's there's now just a really fancy spear coming out of a really fancy hat. That's all it boils down to. Oh, Lord. So, Lord Bastamundi here, sitting here pretty with 282 kills, and moving on to the next lunch for Job of the Hut. You know, these kings have some serious throwing skills. They're throwing their spears sideways at her. They defy physics. Beast of Rama with 430 kills now. Beast of Rama is a very good peasant killing machine. And here comes another fiery convocation. It might actually hit two units of peasants this time. There it goes, right through one and into the next. Ugh, torching a line into that unit. Oh, the peasant's gonna save that prophetess. Probably. They probably don't want to, though. <laughs> 
lady's blessing is lost indeed. Oh, oh, that peasant tripped right in front of that distilled on foot and got smushed. I have a bit of a peasant sandwich going on over here. Oh. There's there's just so much activity going on all over the place. It's hard to pick where what I want to watch the most. Well, obviously, you want to watch more Carnosaur action. So, uh, Wicked, does this mean that your whole army is routed now? We're dead. Ah, <laughs> ah, yes. I do believe that is what Wicked is trying to tell us. All right, YouTube, press F for Wicked. He just goes, "We're dead." <laughs> this is it. This is over. Um, yeah, so it looks like Team Wick, um, Ungrim the Wicked Bear has fully shattered. All that's left now is just one completely full health beast of Rama. Ain't that the truth? With its 8,000 it. healing cap and 11,000 HP. Bring it, says uh, the prophetess Broken Sky, <laughs> who is going to be the first... <laughs> The first thing into that uh, Beast of Rama's path. The first line of defense. And sure enough, walking up, no fear. Fan sporting a very fancy hat, but that is one oh, big oh, beast. What, what an epic shot. That... I feel bad. She's charging in. Oh! Wow! Wow! She's still standing too! She got the charge! We will never surrender. <laughs> and now she's on her butt. <laughs> oh, man. Good lord. Oh, oh. No, that's nice. I zoom in close to her and she's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if I was fighting a Hydra, that would be my um, my battle cry for getting wounded of choice. Eh. 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 Alright, well, let's see what this Carnosaur can do. It's being healed by a revivification crystal. Let's see if it can take down the Beast of Rayma on its own. <laughs> nope. <laughs> if you want it, come get it. No, that, uh, that Carnosaur is seeking out other sources of healing is what's going on, by the looks at it. Some apotheosis. <laughs> yeah, but that prophetess is dead. <laughs> Absolutely dead. And not as important as Carnosaurs are at this stage. Um, because I think Carnosaurs are going to be probably their best bet. You know, masked Carnosaurs against the Beast of Rama can probably get the job done. Um, but just masked looking around... Usually, yes, one would assume. There are still some of Wicked's peasants on the field. Um, oh, really? Yeah, they're they're making their way towards the exits, you know. But um, they they uh, are peasants. Uh, they can't yeah. read, so they don't know what the exit signs are. They don't know which yeah. way to go. They're surrounded by uh, enemy peasants. They don't. It, it's hard to pick which way to run. You're and actually using a map, but. Due to poor literacy rates throughout Bretonia, <laughs> they, 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 think, they think north is down. <laughs> they, they don't actually know, they actually don't know the letter for N. What's N? Exactly. Running off to Mazda Monday. Job of the Hutt's skedaddling out of there. You don't want none of this. One Beast of Rama is more than a match for Zlock, unfortunately, but... The feral carnosaurs are starting to gather. They're going to try and make a flock of carnosaurs, I think is what I would, I would call it. What well, might help the defenders is, uh... Well, never mind. <laughs> I don't think there is anything that will help them against the absurd fire resistance. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm starting to play might not do very well. I'm starting to notice uh, the players are, are trying to click the fast-forward options. I think that's probably a good idea if they do, because I don't think there's too much more that can be done at this stage um, for either of the teams. So let's go ahead and let's get that fast-forward in full effect. 
There we go. A pilgrim. Oh, look, it's a normal game speed. Pilgrim. Yeah. Why does the Beast of Rima have minus 25% fire? But also has 85% fire resistance. Oh, it's because of uh, the regeneration trait. The regeneration oh, trait provides a minus 25% fire resistance. Uh, but have no fear, the Beast of Rima can endure any flaming attack that you provide. The Beast of Rima can endure anything except a uh, Abyssal Shrieker or a Gargantral Zone. Well, nothing can withstand the full impact of a Gargantral Zone. I have yet to see a single creature, man, woman, or child, resist the charge of Gargantral so we are seeing some pretty uh, some pretty high level um, micro out of Reptile King right now. Um, he is he is getting Zlock away from the Beast of Rama and healing up all of the dinosaurs he can. And I think he's trying to he's trying to set up an ambush. Oh. Jurassic Park versus the Beast of Rama. Oh, here they come! Here comes the gank, folks. Yep, this is this has been a fight we've been looking we forward to for a while. Fire. That fire is oh, actually not doing. It. Oh, that beast of Raymond's going down. Look at its health. It's getting punched. I think I should send my peasants in here. Uh oh. Is, that fiery, or is it going to get pushed into the fiery complication? It is! It is! Wow! That was fascinating. Oh, one of the carnosaurs is almost dead. <laughs> That's every spell I've seen thrown at it. Oh, it's, it's going to loop back in. Right across the dino line. Oh, that, oh, that blast carnosaur. It's hanging on by this string of its last leg. Oh, that healing. That mother healing. of the Flame pulls out and dives right back in. It's probably a good call using the, the Mother Look of Flame. Regen on the Beast of Rama, overpowering two carnosaurs, chomping it. But it is, it is taking a beating here. And yeah, they're holding it in place for more flame attacks from the Mother of Flame. Oh. This is this is fascinating. Meanwhile, uh, Lord Mazda Mundi's um, skinks are taking pot shots all day from the back of Zlock, which is fascinating to watch. Did we, did we lose a Carnosaur? Oh, for oh, sure. Did. Absolutely, one of the carnosaurs is missing, but this beast of ram is about to go down. I don't think he can take this this kind of abuse all day. I I don't know if we won. I think we lost. It'll be interesting to see who has the most peasants remaining at the end of this. That's for sure. And Mazamundi just throwing salt on the wound, just healing up in the last moments of the match. I mean, th these are going to be some long last moments because I do believe the Beast of Rama is actually healing faster than damage is being done to it at this stage. Uh, and Zlock charges in. He's done with this waiting, this waiting gig. He wants a piece of the Beast of Rama. He throws down another shield of the old ones, and the Mother of the Flame gets a rear charge. That Beast of Rama is has gained in just the past few seconds seven hundred hit points. Not lost, but gained. The Beast of Rama is a regening machine, man. Ooh, in comes Oh, right on their own dinos. Not that it matters too much. Yeah, dinos with their high armor, they tend to just shrug off all fire attacks. So Regina can actually be fairly cavalier with the use of um, the Mother of the Flames spells. This is impressive. Ugh, beast of I, uh, I, I think we lost this one. I may, uh, I may have don't been too sound, aggressive. Don't sound too optimistic, Broken Sky. May have a shot. Ah, uh, yeah, we're competing. Wait, victory belongs to those who lose more peasants, am I correct? No, no, victory is to the team that, that has the, the most peasants remaining. Or, or rather, I should say, the team that killed the most peasants of the other team. Uh, which is bad, because I think most of the enemy team routed, while most of mine were slaughtered by, uh... 
bells going off left and right, folks. This is the power of the mother of the flame. The beast of Rain is still clinging on for dear life. With yes, almost healed up to its more health for its healing. Rainbow's not going down without a fight, that's for sure. I think it's going down though. And well. there it goes. Victory. Or is it? Victory has been assured. So, Thank you, Kentucky Fried yeah. Advisor. Um, we won't be doing that in this video. <laughs> We may do we may do another round, but that's going to happen either in a second video or something else. But let's go ahead and let's get our final results here. Okay, so wow, so Team Broken Rep Gina, a grand total of one thousand and eighteen peasants lost, as compared to Team Ungrim the Wicked Bear, one thousand one hundred and eight peasants lost. So a difference of 90 a difference of 90 separates these two teams but the winning team is broken rep gina congratulations you killed more peasants you are the better peasant slayers demand a recount <laughs> no all right <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for participating in this. I know it's definitely going to be a slow motion replay. I hope this was entertaining for you. I know I enjoyed it. I know um, I know that Holy Pilgrim loves getting his uh, his mod more time out there. Pilgrim, do you have any last parting words for, for the audience? Get your friends. Have fun with Warhammer. It doesn't matter if you're using my mod or not. It's an awesome game. Just, but use his mod. Blast. But use his mod. <laughs> All right, so again, thank you very much. I hope you all have a pleasant evening. As ever, I am Appy as Atius Rolis. I look forward to seeing you guys either the next Air of Carthage stream or here at my very own channel. Uh, you know, likes help. I like them. You can like me. Uh, but more importantly, subscribe, because I really want to show more people what I've got. I have more crazy ideas like this, and I promise they won't always be in slow motion. Sometimes they'll be in regular speed. All right? You all have a great evening. Thank you very much.